This is the new Sony a7C2, and this is the same camera but turned into a cinema camera with a built-in cooling system, V-mount battery plate, better filming ergonomics, tons of mounting points for video accessories, and in this video I'm going to show you how you too can take this amazing little camera and turn it into a cinema beast. But first, a quick disclaimer. Sony sent out the a7C2 for this video, but they are not sponsoring this video. I'm not keeping the camera no money exchange hands that said this video is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera guides LUTs and camera gear like this project so check the link in the description to learn more and thank you guys so much for the support so let's take a closer look at the cinema camera build then I'll get into the parts needed how to build one for yourself then we'll get into the a7c what's new with this camera and we'll talk about why I did this in the first place so here's what I'm calling the P a7c2 P stands for my last name Pike. You can see the A72 right there in the middle and the display off to one side. You'll notice that the top and the bottom of this cinema camera build are made up of two giant metal plates. This houses all of the cables, built-in fan, and gives us a ton of mounting points for other gear like this NATO top handle I have installed. On the operator side, we have a 3D printed side panel with padding for the screen of the camera. So you can still flip it out and use it as you normally would. And then you can close it when you're in transit, don't need it because you have an external monitor or just want to use it as a second touch screen on the side of your camera. This plate also has some mounting points where you can add cold shoe receivers, small cheese plates or other video accessories. On the back, we have a mini V mount battery plate that can accept full size or mini batteries, giving us tons of runtime and extra power options like USB-C, D-Tap, and 8-volt barrel connectors. The handle of the camera is still usable, as well as the buttons on the back. Looking on the right side, we can see there is a small, quiet fan just behind the camera to keep things cool, and we'll talk about cooling more later. The entire build is crazy strong with all of these metal plates and just feels amazing in the hands. Rigging this thing up is also super easy thanks to all of the mounting plates. Before we get to the build, I wanna talk about the a7C2 and why I love this new camera. In short, the a7C2 takes the guts of the Sony a7 IV but puts it into the original a7C body style. Then Sony added and or upgraded the feature list. Up until now, the Sony a7 IV has been my main workhorse here on the channel. I'm filming with one right now. I've got another one I use for thumbnails and filming around the studio. And I've loved this camera for its oversampled full frame sensor, 10 bit color, flip out screen, long battery life, stabilized sensor, and the price. This new a7C2 has all of those features, but adds LUT support a more video-centric display and menu, in-camera time-lapse video creation, the newest Sony AI autofocus features, with a dedicated processing unit, and more. All while stripping the body down to a smaller size and weight, which makes this crazy camera build possible and so easy. Now that weight and size loss does come with some cons that I want to make you aware of. First, the viewfinder on the a7C2 isn't as nice as on the a7 IV. It only has a single card slot, and the full-size HDMI is replaced with a micro HDMI output. Controls are also a little different. We lose the joystick. And finally, a potential issue could be heat as the a7C has a tiny body with a lot of sensor and processing power. That said, on my demo unit, I had no issues with overheating with the temp set too high in the menu. And all of my testing has been at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So you could run into issues in hotter environments. That said, the cinema build deals with that because we have a built-in fan for longer run times if you're in hot environments. The loss of full-size HDMI does hurt on the a7C2, but it still retains everything that made me fall in love with the a7 IV, but at a lower price point and new features like LUT support, which I absolutely love being able to throw my own LUTs on here, which you can purchase down in the description, and having my own false color built into a camera. It's just amazing. All right, so let's move on to the cinema build. Everything mentioned will be down in the description. We're to start with a parts list. To build a PA7C2, you are going to need an A7C2. And this also works with the A7CR. You'll also need two small rigs, 1681 cheese plates, two Camvate camera base plates, one Nicey rig cheese plate, the Nitsy mini V-mount plate, one or two 3 8 
to one quarter adapters, a Sony FZ100 dummy battery. I'm going to use a Condor Blue model, but there are tons of options out there at all kinds of different prices. A short angle DC cable and the Cineback A7C2 kit, which is my latest 3D printed product sold by Camera Foundry. This kit includes a side panel, fully assembled fan module, V-mount base plate cover, and all the necessary screws to put everything together. I'll also be selling the 3D files for those of you who have your own 3D printer and want to wing it solo. The last thing you're going to need is a cage for the A7C2. I'm using the original small rig A7C cage, not the small rig A7C2 cage, as this was a pre-production camera I'm working with, so I didn't have access to new cages, but once they're available, I'll test it out and update you in the comments section of this video. But for now, the original A7C cage fits and works. Now let's take these parts and build a cinema camera. First, take the A7C2 and install it in the small rig cage. Next, we need to work on the metal frame that holds the camera and other parts in place. Start by taking one of the large small rig cheese plates and one of the cam bait plates and connect this screw to this hole. When done, it should look like this. This is going to be the bottom of the rig. We want the back to look like this and have these holes line up. The smaller plate will stick out on one side slightly and that's fine. Next, take the nicey rig plate and insert two quarter 20 by 3 8 bolts from the cine back kit here and here. Then bolt it to the previously made plates in this orientation. Check the back to make sure these holes are aligned. Now we can set the entire bottom section aside and we'll start in on the top section by taking another large small rig plate and inserting two quarter 20 bolts from the cine back kit here and here. Now grab another cam bait plate and mount it in this orientation using those two screws. It should be centered when looking from the back. Now we can mount the top section onto the bottom section. Flip it around and use a flat head screwdriver to attach them together like you see here. With that done, your frame should look something like this. Now we can slide the camera cage in between the top and bottom plates. Looking at the top of the entire assembly, line up these holes in the frame with the threads on the cage. Use two screws from the cine back kick to secure the frame to the cage. Make sure that the hot shoe is centered in this slot to ensure that the camera is straight. It's okay if these screws look a little off as the cage and camera don't center at the same point. Now we can flip the entire setup over and secure the base plate to the camera cage using another cine back screw here. Check for any plates that may not be square and adjust and or tighten the screws as necessary. At this point, I added two quarter inch to three inch adapters to these larger threads so that I could add my own quick release plate for tripods. You can add a 15 millimeter rod base plate here and or your own tripod plate of choice. Now let's start working on the battery plate. Take the Nitsi mini V mount plate and remove these four screws and slide out the bottom cover as it is too tall to fit our rig. Using those same four screws, attach this new slim cover included in the cine back kit. Do not over tighten here. Now insert two long screws that come with the Nitsi plate and attach it to our rig here. It should perfectly fit between the top and bottom plates of the frame. Now we can add the Cineback side plate and fan module. Take the two included M3 by 14 flathead screws and insert them through the slots of the CineDock side plate here. Now those screws can go into these holes on the fan module. Make sure that the little arrow is pointing toward where your camera is going to go. Do not over tighten these screws. The final alignment should look like this, but the fan module can be adjusted and moved to any of these slots. I designed this to be modular, so down the road we could add more accessories and modify this as needed. If it is not already installed, add the included foam strip here to protect your screen when it is closed. Now the entire cine dock can be slid into the side of the frame and fastened down with four or five included bolts at the top plate and the bottom plate. Do not over tighten these. You don't need a lot of pressure to hold this in place. If you haven't already, add a base plate or quick release to the camera. The side plate might stick out slightly toward the bottom, so if it interferes with your tripod or other rigging, you can add another nicey rig or other cheese plate to correct this and give you a little bit of space between the cinema camera and your quick release plate. Next, connect a dummy battery from your camera to the battery plate along with a DC cable from the battery plate 
to the fan module. The fan module can support 5 volts up to 13.8 volts. So you can use the 8 volt jack on the side of the battery plate for a slower spin. And if you want more cooling, you could get a D-TAP to 12 volt regulated adapter. And with that, you now have a PA7C2. Now let's talk about additional accessories you can get to trick out your new camera. Here you can go as mild or wild as you like. I added a Nitsi top handle, a small rig 50 watt V-mount battery to the back. And while you can use the handle on the camera, I have larger hands. So I decided to get this rosette adapter and this right-handed rosette wooden handle which makes the setup just feel amazing. The plates on the top and bottom of this rig have tons of room for 15 millimeter rod clamps if you want to use 15 millimeter gear. And even though the plates protrude over the lens mount a little bit, you're still able to fit huge lens adapters like this PL one I've got mounted here. And finally, you can add cold shoe mounts or even more cheese plates like these mini plates to mount even more gear like transmitters, D-tap splitters, and more. Just keep in mind, this side plate that comes with the kit is 3D printed, so don't put a ton of weight on it, but it'll easily hold a wireless receiver or something like that. So now that we've built this, some might ask the question, but why? And I have a couple reasons why I decided to build this. First, I've been thinking about this kind of a project for a long time treating your mirrorless camera kind of like a small box with a sensor and then rigging it out however you need it to be rigged out. Next is going to be price. The parts list from earlier in this video will set you back around $300. At the time of this filming, Sony has not let me know what the final retail price of the a7C2 is going to be, but I'm assuming it's going to be less than the a7 IV let's say $2,100 or $2,200. So for 24, 2,500 bucks, you could own this setup, which to me is just insane. The next reason is going to be power. Using these mini V mount batteries, you're not gonna add a ton of weight, especially the small rig 50 watt, but you're gonna be able to run for so long and power multiple accessories. Then we have cooling. There's a fan built in here. So things like overheating and higher temperatures is way less likely. And again, for a cinema camera, that's kind of important. Also, this whole thing acts like a massive heat sink. So I think we're gonna be doing a lot better than stock when it comes to cooling. Then we have the mounting options, both on the bottom, sides, and the top. I mean, look at how many places you could mount something. So there's really infinite ways to rig this thing up. And it is so nice being able to just put things on the rig and not have to worry about, you know, having a handful of tiny spots to mount stuff and having all this gear all around your camera. You can compactly pack all kinds of things on this and keep the whole footprint down to something manageable. The final reason I think this rig makes a lot of sense is it's reversible. You can build your a7C up to this monster and have a fantastic ergonomic cinema camera or if you want to travel super light, strip it back down to the original body. And that's something you cannot do with an FX6. The FX6 will always be an FX6. And no, I'm not saying this replaces an FX6, so don't even go there in the comments. The point is you kind of have two cameras in one. You can build it up to a modest cinema camera or strip it down to a mirrorless little hybrid. And finally, that brings me to the A7C and who I think this camera is for. In my opinion, the a7C is now the new full frame budget king. For people like me who mostly film YouTube videos or kind of documentary corporate style shoots, this thing is going to be a fantastic choice. It's a tiny box with my favorite Sony sensor. And when it comes to upgrades like LUT support and the new AI autofocus stuff, you really can't go wrong with it. If again, you're mainly a video shooter. If you shoot more stills, maybe 50-50 or a higher ratio, I still think the Sony a7 IV is the way to go. You're going to way more enjoy the stock ergonomics on this camera, the larger grip, the EVF or viewfinder is much better. And with the joystick and full size HDMI, it's just a more well-rounded camera if you're just pulling it out of the box and using it like that. And of course we have the SD card slots. There are two on the a7 IV. The a7C gets rid of a lot of that and brings it down to, again, a sensor in a tiny box with a flip out screen. So that's gonna wrap up my thoughts on the new Sony a7C and this P7C cinema camera. Stay tuned for updates because I have a lot of plans to take this idea and apply it to other cameras. So if you don't have the a7C2 or don't want it, that's okay. We're going to look at other builds for other cameras. Everything mentioned will be down in the description as usual. I want to thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you guys in the next video.